The first first obstacle we had was what we were going to do when when the when the teachers you know came back you know obviously last night the last nine weeks of last year we weren't in school so everybody had about two weeks to <laughs> finalize how they were going to teach remote which we've never done before. So I think some of the most difficult challenges we faced as a as a department was just trying to figure out how to best serve our students um, because our students have been identified as, need, as having special needs. And so we were trying to figure out how to best serve them um, given the fact that they are on IEPs and how to offer them the services that they needed to be successful in school um, via in a remote, sti in a remote style. Um, being able to come back in August, um, we still did ha we still had some students who were on remote and who still are on remote, um, but it has gotten easier for us to, to make those adjustments. So I think initially it was just us trying to jump in the pool with both feet and figure things out quickly. The biggest challenge for me probably was in the area of vocational. Our vocational people weren't able to meet with their um, advisory committees in person. Um, they weren't able to take their students out on job uh, shadowing opportunities. They weren't able to go to competitions that we go to yearly. You just, a lot of those things were taken away and we had to find ways to incorporate that in a different way. When, it, when the choice was made to go fully in person, I think a lot of us were scared. It's hard to come to work every day knowing that at any moment you could be sent home because you were sick and yet we still came to work and we're still coming to work and we still don't know if we're out of this yet and what the future is going to hold. You know, nobody goes into teaching knowing that this is the risk that they're going to have to have. Um, that's not a risk that we've ever had to, to, to think about daily. At the beginning of the year and continuing through the first semester, it was very challenging trying to juggle quarantine students versus in-person students. And now, as the second semester is in full swing, um, juggling when remote students come back into the general population has been a challenge. Pulling double duty with both teaching in the classroom and obviously having to conduct our Google Meets and uh, teach our kids on quarantine. Um, when students have gotten back from quarantine, we've noticed uh, difficult to getting them to respond to to what they need to do and, and what to do for them. With wearing masks, it's very difficult to um, help students with the articulation that is necessary for learning a new language. Uh, learning a new language and new sounds depends is dependent upon articulation of the mouth and tongue. And if I cannot see what my students are doing and they cannot see what I'm doing, that puts a, a, a very difficult twist in the whole process. Some of our cooperative learning strategies, um, cultural activities with food, and hands-on games that we use to learn and rehearse vocabulary are, have gone by the wayside with COVID. Oh my gosh, at this point I'd say we have to be ready for anything. Um, we are looking at teaching students in multiple formats. Um, we've had to adapt to not having some of our learning strategies, such as Kagan strategies, small group work. Um, we just, we've had to find new ways to teach and to make it accessible for students, no matter what. Probably the biggest challenge we have had is the adoption of our new textbooks. And that has just been a lot of extra work for us on top of all the stuff for COVID. Um, the time constraints has also been something we've faced with cleaning desks, um, door duty, temperature checks. I guess the probably the first thing that changed was just how we were going to deal with all of the kids that were remote um, versus how we were going to deal with the kids that were here. Um, because the social emotional learning piece um, and also just how we're going to counsel students does not look the same um, for the kids that are here versus the kids that are at home. We all came into this having no idea what it was going to look like. We were scared of what it was going to look like for us to teach, that we weren't going to be able to connect with our students. What were we going to do as they came in and out of the classrooms? And nobody had any real guidance as to what was going on. 
Um, our CT programs are very hands-on. Um, almost every department uh, or every group has the specific tools that need to be shared, uh, kitchens that have to be shared, um, supplies, cameras, whatever they are. And to come back um, under, you know, very strict guidelines of what can, we can do and how we can be together uh, really put for some tough challenges before us. I really want to thank the students and staff for all the effort they have put in because it's their effort that's made it possible for us to remain one-to-one uh, -one student since August. We are the only school that I know of, of our size, that hasn't had to go to hybrid or hasn't had to go to remote. And I think that's because of the dedication of our staff and because of the cooperation of our students. I want to thank our students from the youngest freshman to the senior here that has wore their masks, that have helped teachers sanitize desks, that have used the hand sanitizer, that has done their work online instead of uh, doing paper and pencil and handing it to the teachers so that we're not transferring the stuff around. Also, they have done a great job of not sharing things. And it's lots of times things that you don't think of. Who would have ever thought that we would have been afraid to share a welding helmet or that we've been afraid to share art supplies? But we haven't done that. The students have, have been very cooperative and that's why we've been able to stay one-on-one -on -one the entire school year. We've had teachers step up and we're able to, while during quarantine, continue to teach and provide a excellent, um, excellent education to our students. Even though they maybe weren't here physically, they were still there and still preparing our students. Our collaboration time has been critical. Um, we have you know, focused on um, technology and, and ways to engage students in multiple settings, whether they're in person or online. We've just tried to find ways to make um, material, you know, accessible to students and really keep them engaged all the time. Um, we do Google Meets uh, twice a week, um, the three counselors do, with all of our remote students. Um, we also do one-on-one -on -one, um, counseling sessions with our remote students if we need to. Um, so that was probably the biggest way it changed, like right in the beginning, just was how we were going to, um, you know, make sure that our kids are okay when they're here in the building and, and teachers are laying eyes on them every day. Um, we have a much better gauge of if they're okay than if they're at home. Okay, I think one of our biggest challenges um, for the tech coaches is that this year brought so many different levels. So we have teachers that have mastered technology, and then we have teachers that were um, a little bit behind the curve on using it. But with all the PD we did in the beginning of the year and just the support from the collabs, our teachers at the high school really stepped up and everybody kind of got to that same page. They found what worked for them. They mastered what worked for them. They supported each other in that learning. Our teachers just really stepped up and pushed that technology for our students. The best way that we've found to handle these challenges is keeping our delivery platforms consistent. And that's currently through the use of uh, Google Classroom for all classes, which it wasn't that way last year and the ability to post daily lessons uh, through Screencastify on those platforms has really been beneficial. More videos have had to be recorded, uh, whether it's Screencastify's or just putting things out there in video to the students, uh, helping them uh, meet their challenges while they're on quarantine. And, and so teachers making use of that has been good. Uh, but one of the, the things that I think that all of our departments kind of had um, had to do was be really creative. And in the fine arts department, um, Susan Stanball, she had to kind of figure out some new ways of uh, putting on live concerts. Um, uh, Holly Johnson had to do the same thing, um, figure out new ways of presenting theater to the community and to our students. Um, and in ours, uh, we really focused on trying to get supplies that were um, for use for the individual kids uh, so that they would have something um, to take home with them if we did have to go remote. And so for some of the remote learners, um, you know, they didn't have to focus on that necessarily, but for those kids that were quarantined, uh, it was really important for us to have supplies for them. I think one of the changes, I think it was a great change, is our door duties, where we, we meet the kids every day at, the, at one, one of the entrances that we have open. Uh, we have multiple entrances here at the high school, and we covered five, six of those areas, and 
What I found through that process, it wasn't so much about making sure they had a mask and an ID on. It was an opportunity to talk to our kids the first thing out of the morning, put a smile on their face, ask them how their day was going. You know, what, you know, if a child had done something really good, like our wrestlers, you know, uh, winning the state championship, they come in the door and you, that's the first thing they heard was congratulations. And I felt that was probably the biggest thing that we did to get our students back in the flow of education, back in the flow of school, putting a, a face with a name, uh, faces they don't normally see, both ways, teacher and student, and, and developing relationships. Because during this time, relationships took a hit. Let's be honest, they, they, they took a hit and we had to come back and, and redevelop a lot of relationships and it provided an opportunity to do that. So I think that was the biggest change and one that I would like to see continue. But I think the biggest thing that we did was everything that our teachers did, everything that our custodians did, everything that our lunch ladies, everything that our administrators did, but, but especially our teachers, everything they did was geared towards what is best for our students. Uh, wearing the mask, the teachers take temperature checks every morning. We don't catch a lot of kids that have COVID, but we have caught kids that we've sent home with strep or with bronchitis. And that is also just as important so that we're not spreading that around. Uh, the teachers take the temp checks, they greet the kids, they make sure the kids have their masks on and that, and that they're wearing them. Also, the teachers sanitize their desks after every class. The custodians have done a great job of uh, cleaning the bathrooms and the drinking fountains. We have shut the drinking fountains off and only water bottles can be used and we're not sharing bottles, of course, and so that's that's helped us a great deal. You know, Mr. Wetzel came up with a, a five lunches instead of three so we could move them in, disinfect the lunchroom, move them to another area, and and always keep it running smoothly. And it's it's probably been the smoothest, the smoothest lunch time that we've had in our last 10 years. So it, it did create some new challenges, but it also gave us some opportunities to to reach out in different ways and and uh but it was always with the student in mind and and I, I just think our teachers have done you know they only have the one hour of plan time a day and then the one hour of clab time and they had to put everything aside to make sure that they're teaching the kids that are not in school because we have about it we had about a hundred of them that were in remote we had you know, countless number of hours that our teachers had to spend not only planning for the day, the hour, but planning for how they were going to use the technology to get to the student outside as well as inside and still um, disinfect the rooms and still, you know, ensure that, that they're at the front doors, ensure that they're prepared for tomorrow, ensure that the technology that they have works for, for everything. And, and, and on top of that, doing the normal things. So it, it was very, very challenging for our teachers to put the students first and foremost. I think that, again, we just, we're able to adapt to anything instead of just this monumental change and thinking, oh my gosh, okay, well now what am I gonna do today? We're we're ready to go. We're just, you know, surprises, I guess, are, are kind of out the window. We're just, we're not surprised by much and we're just able to adapt and, and overcome. Students can keep up with us in class uh, since uh, all assignments are posted in Google Classroom. Uh, we've also noticed there seems to be less missing work because the students can access everything in Google Classroom again. We seem to get more frequent feedback, whether it's um, us doing feedback to the students or sometimes the students giving feedback to us. We can also easily check the progress of our students. What are they doing in Google Classroom? How far are they on assignment? So obviously Google Classroom has been a big impact on what we feel has helped us this year. We have been able to take kids who have missed two to three weeks of school for surgery and keep them daily engaged, whether that's through Google Meets, um, online discussion boards, whether that's Flipgrid um, <clears throat> and other online services like that. Um, but it also has allowed us, since we're no longer having the in-person, the student-led conferences, 
We've had good conversations with all parties concerned through Google Meet that we wouldn't have had before. And that's been really useful in the fact that in real time now, if I need to talk to a mom in one place and a dad in one place and a son in front of me or another kid at home, we can do that all instantaneously. And our teachers are becoming much more um, efficient at juggling those types of situations. The social emotional learning um, and just our, our students' mental health um, is very important all the time, um, but probably especially during a pandemic. Um, I hope that that carries through. I hope that carries through after the pandemic um, because I think um, that overall everyone, adults, kids, you know, we need to, to kind of remove that stigma and it needs to be okay. Um, mental health is just as important as physical health and we need to make that a priority, you know, after everything does get back to the, the normal or, or the new normal or as close to to normal as we can get, that those conversations are still okay. We can move forward um, with the emphasis on mental health like we have for the last year. And looking on the year and considering everything that we've been through, uh, being out sick, uh, almost everyone down our wing of the building has been sick at some point. Uh, and to know that we're still coming back and we're still doing this um, and that we're still rising to the challenge, that we're still meeting the kids and we're still out there. It, some would say it's, it's just your job to do this, but it's more than that. It, we, are, we are making that choice to um, put aside uh, our, our health issues and some of that, and we keep coming back to work. We keep coming back. I think we've done a great job working together, communicating with one another, and being there for one another when we needed to be. Um, and I think that's gonna carry on as well. Um, it's been a tough year um, and it's going to continue to be tough. The challenges are not done yet and yet we will continue to to work at them in the best that we can. Really wanted to um, thank our school board and our administrators because when we were shut down, you know, they had to put in so many extra hours to try to get things figured out. And um, knowing that I work for a district who took care of everybody. They pulled together, they figured out how to take care of our classified staff. They figured out how to take care of our kids and how to take care of us in the best way that they could given a circumstance that we had never experienced before. And I think um, collectively as a building, I think we just, we rocked it. I mean, there were there, in no other term, I mean, we just rocked it. We were handed something that Nobody ever thought, I never thought in my years of, of being a teacher that I would ever have to experience anything like this. And I think, um, I think moving forward, it's only made us a better building and a better district um, and a better community. I think we've seen um, a lot of parents who in the past may have had kind of a negative view of schools um, I think they've really maybe kind of changed their minds and seen that, that teachers and staff and administrators really do care about the students that we serve every single day. Because um, it absolutely broke our hearts when we couldn't be here. You know, we, it wasn't like we were caught off guard about helping kids. And that's the one thing I want, I want you know, our school board and our superintendent and our, and our, our community to understand is that our teachers weren't caught off guard about helping kids. They've been doing this for years and, and they just had to do it a different way. It wasn't like we all of a sudden flipped a switch and said, oh boy, we better start helping kids. They've been doing it this way and they've been doing it the right way for so many years that that needs to be noticed also. It wasn't like, oh, well, we have a crisis, now we have a virus, and so our teachers now all of a sudden decide to care for kids. That is not the case. That They just went a different way about doing it because they've always reached our kids and we're so thankful for that. It's great to be a Great Bend High Panther. It's, it's great, great to be a Great Bend High Panther. It's great to be a Great Bend High Panther. It's great to be a Great Bend High Panther. It's great to be a Great Bend High Panther. It is great to be a Great Bend High Panther. It's great to be a Great Bend High Panther.